I feel that in the isness appear mostly sorrow and fear. Mm -hmm. I feel strong identification energy in the body and mind. And so I, my question, why is this uh, mm. negative energy persist? Uh, very good. We have a long-standing relationship with personality. And we even believe and refer to ourselves as this personality. And then the personality which is strongly shaped out of mind and thought and habit, it starts to behave now like it's a separate entity from yourself. Who is going to punish you? How dare you want to be free from me? Huh? <laughs> Let's see. You see, for some people, sometimes it doesn't take that look. Depending on your nature and temperament, doubts will come or negative uh, uh, sensations and feelings come, and you'll forget that you're able to observe these, eh? and from the place of observing, there's nothing, there's no content, there's no history, there's no person. So you can see the waves coming up of resistance and doubts and negativity, but you can hold your ground as the undivided seer of them, and they pass as all things do. Time pass relationships, all different things, are subject to change. You are just observing this, and yet it is as though a tremendous power force is coming to sabotage and to sink your ship of freedom. It's like this. But all this is dream, but you don't know it is dream. And it's not all fight, fight, fight. If you remember, and as you see, you know, the fight only happens when I am identified with my mind. You even say, the mind is not happy about it. If you knew the difference between your mind and yourself, it wouldn't matter so much. But it matters to us what our mind has to say, because the mind is taken to be um, so intimate, so necessary. I am not so in the mind in its widest aspect, I am talking about the mind in its psychological play. The mind that is caught up with identity, this one is going to be strong. But mind and its the mind also is the self, is aspect of the self also. When you wake up to the truth of yourself and he cannot fight you, he will join you and come into silence also. End of the monkey business. It's like yeah. I'm identified with the observer. Yes. So am I identified in this? The observer is a function. The sense of a person and the senses and the thinker, these are functions. These are functions. That which is aware of the functions, but uh, not functioning them, that is uh, not a function. The awareness itself, you, if you say awareness of, we usually sometimes say awareness of, like, I'm conscious about something. But the awareness I'm speaking is like this space. I'm using the word space. That might be misleading, because we even have concepts about space also. That space which is beyond concept, in which you naturally... It, I cannot say, oh, that's the space, and this is you. Um, uh, it is without the you which is personal. But at the same time, you, the existence, are there. And it is uh, perfectly harmonious. It and the Self are not different like that. The person it appears, of course, uh, somewhere, because the person is something visible here. Mm. Also, the mind function, the waves of emotion and thought and so on can appear. But now, Previously, when they were appearing for a personality or a person, they had a virility about them, they had a tax about them, they had all of this. But seen from this neutral place, when we do invitation, you've, you are here fully, but you are not. Uh, nothing we write about you is true. It's not personal. There's no history from that place of pure consciousness. The mind waves are not significant for you even to say that you notice them. 
Just like if you walk through the marketplace, busy marketplace, many people will be distracted, but maybe somebody, you speak to them and they say, no, no, I didn't notice anything. It was nothing that was catching their attention. So they didn't pick up or register anything at all. When the mind stuff in its personal or psychological mode is perceived from the true place, it, there's nothing to speak about, no comment about it. It becomes insignificant. It perhaps not even noticed even. We speak about the mind because the one who is attacked by the mind, we still identify with this one. If there was no identification with the personal sense, we wouldn't speak about mind. Thank you. The more we give attention to the mind stuff, then it seems as though it's growing in its sense of reality. They correlate like that. It feels like it's right here, and everything, the whole world, your life, your future, is being lived from a place of identity. And no one sees that identity itself is a cloud. You see, identity is, is appearing to be the sky itself. This is why I used the term yesterday, the mask of God. The person appears and it's like, that's what we are. But it really does not exist apart from the belief that gives it such strength. And that belief comes from you also. I don't want that belief anymore. And then... Stop believing it. I can't say stop believing. Be aware of belief, that that is also a function. Just be, just be aware that is also something noticed. And, and, and see from where this is seen. Acknowledge that that is something seen. It will change, another thing will come, other things are coming and going. Notice the stillness in which all things... It is the most simple... It, in a, at a certain point, it will become the most obvious for you. Everything is coming and going, everything. But when you have the sense of a person, everything matters so deeply. When you are the Self, it's not that nothing matters, it's that you don't mind. Something plays to address them, but your highest state is your Self-abidance in yourself. This is the most important thing. Thank you, Mitty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very good. Okay. Beyond high and low, I am the same Self in all. Beyond inner and outer, I am the same Self in all. If there is only the One, I am the same Self in all. Why lament or cry, O oh my mind? I am the same Self in all. There is no real distinction between the, imagine, the imaginer and the imagination. There is no real distinction between the cause and its effect. A poem and its words are one and the same. Why cry, O oh my mind? I am the same Self in all. Rational mind, intuitive mind, poetic mind, where is it heard in you? There is a place in each of us that these words are at home. You don't have to explain that, but you recognize it. You feel the energy of it. All infinite space is pervaded by the Self, but nothing else pervades the Self. It is simultaneously within and without. It cannot be limited or divided in parts. You may read one thing or hear one thing said here, and a seeming contradictory thing said here. And yet, in the Self, there is no contradiction. There is not even agreement. How we can understand that? Why to read something like this, which is beyond the grip 
of the psychological mind and the personal mind. Hmm? Because it's speaking to the higher self. It's the vibration from the higher self. It is extremely subtle and cannot be seen. It is primary to all qualities, the yogis say. It is the state that underlies all other temporary states of the mind. Ashtavakra Gita on awareness, just a few verses. Yesterday I lived bewildered in illusion, but now I am awake, flawless and serene beyond the world. From my light, the body and the world arise. So all things are mine, or nothing is. Now I have given up the body and the world. I have a special gift. I see the infinite self. As a wave, seething and foaming is only water, so all creation, streaming out of the Self, is only the Self. Consider a piece of cloth. It is only threads. So all creation, when you look closely, is only the Self. Like the sugar in the juice of the sugar cane, I am the sweetness in everything I have made. When the Self is unknown, the world arises, but not when it is known. But you mistake the rope for the snake. When you see what the rope really is, the snake vanishes. My nature is light, nothing but light. When the world arises, I alone am shining. This truth is inside your heart.